The Grain Pile Principle, now on Fixing the Money Thing. If you are not prospering, you need to pay very close attention to this series. If God's with you, you should prosper. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, pay close attention to this, Saul, you don't see God, God's invisible. How did he see God? The Lord gave him what? Success in everything. The world likes success, by the way. Joseph found favor in his eyes, became his attendant. Potiphar put, uh, put him in charge of his estate, his household, and entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. He did not have to worry about anything except the food he had to eat. So we need to pay close attention to the story. The Lord is with Joseph, and the Bible says he prospered. Did you see that? Right? That's what it said, right? The Lord is with Joseph, and he prospered. He's a slave. But it says that what? He prospered. Where at? In the house of the ungodly. In the house with no chance. In the house of no potential. He prospered. Friend, let's lay aside your entitlement mentality and your victim mentality. Joseph had a background. You need to leave your hurts behind. You may need to leave your, you know, thinking you're being cheated out of something behind. Maybe you're not the right ethnic color or group or whatever you may say, I don't quite fit in. Forget all that. Joseph didn't. Everyone might hate you and even wish you dead like they did Joseph. You need to forget how you were rejected and abandoned. You need to forget how disloyalty has hurt you in the past and you've suffered at the hand of disloyalty. You need to forget the injustice of being falsely accused. You need to forget the hopeless situation you're in like Joseph was in prison with no way out because God has a plan for your life. But you've got to see that plan. You've got to step into it and stop dwelling on who you think you are. You know, if you saw Adam, Adam and Eve, if you saw Adam after the fall, you would say he was a loser. I mean, his own son killed his other son. There are some pretty serious family issues going down. Cain killed Abel, one of Adam's sons. His brother killed his own brother. They lived in poverty. They lost their kingdom, if you will, lost their provision. The Bible says now they'll live living by a painful toil and sweat. So here's this impoverished guy, family issues, marital issues, it was the woman you gave me that made me do that, all this stuff. You got, you got serious problems. And you say, there's no chance that guy can do anything. But you have not seen his created purpose. If you'd go back before he fell, you would go, this guy is ruling the world. He's of royal descent. My friend, you've got to stop looking at yourself from who you think you are. And you need to look at yourself of how God designed you to be. There's royal blood in your veins. God made you a special purpose. He made you to rule life, win in life. I believe that Joseph had dreams. You remember Joseph's story when he was a young boy, he had dreams. His brother got upset because in his dream he saw himself ruling and being a ruler, and they got upset by that. But I believe those dreams held him in those days because I believe Joseph knew that God was faithful to him and he would not stay there forever. He didn't know how it happened, but he knew God knew where he was at, and he was faithful to God. And he would someday come out of those situations. I, I believe that. You know, a dream is a picture. A dream is a picture. If I said, close your eyes right now and think of you, what do you see? A lot of people see them this way. Well, I'm not pretty. I'm fat. I'm overweight. I don't have money. I don't. That's what they think about when they think of themselves. I don't like to look at myself in the mirror. I don't like to know, you know, I don't like to, da, da, da. friend, you got to get over that. You are a child of God and you have been made in God's image and you are special. And until you recognize that, no one else will. Dreams are important. Polly, my daughter, when she was about yay, got that high, we asked her what she wanted for Christmas. I thought it was kind of strange. She said, I want a cash register. <laughs> I want a cash register. 
Why, Polly? Because I'm going to own my own hair salon someday, and I want to run a cash register. Now, if you don't know Polly, she, runs a hair, she has her own hair salon now, and she has a cash register. But this is what she said from this high. She also said, and I'm going to marry John Patton. She never told John that. I mean, her entire life, I'm going to marry John Patton. I'm going to be a hairdresser. I'm running a cash register. And she married John Patton. This is a true story. Pretty amazing. You know, when you're kids, you ever sit around with your cousins or your brothers and sisters and say, what do you want to do when you grow up? And you began to dream about things like that until life beat those dreams out of you. But listen, those dreams are still alive. God's the one that made you a dreamer, friend. So was Joseph's journey a fluke? Was it coincidence? I don't think so. I mean, obviously God led him, but he played a big role. And the principles that took place, we need to talk about. So it said that the Lord was with Joseph and he, again, prospered. What does it mean the Lord was with Joseph? Isn't God with everyone? That's a trick question. The answer is no, he's not. He loves everyone. He desires to be with everyone, but he's not with everyone. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Paul, writing to the Gentile church, Gentile being people raised outside of the nation of Israel, says, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth, called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Verse 19, consequently, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, also members of his household. So when it says God was with Joseph, it's referring to the legality of Abraham's covenant. It made it legal for God to be with Joseph and be on his team, be on his be with him and to, to bless him. You, with, you got that. You figured that out. You got that? Everyone needs to understand that. The Lord was with Joseph because Joseph had covenant. There was a legal agreement with his great-granddad, that lineage. God was with Joseph. I am Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing and thanks for watching.